All right, let's talk electrochemistry. The basics of this kind of fascinating topic. So electrochemistry connects chemistry and electricity. We literally use electrochemistry every day. Electrochemical devices change chemical energy into electrical energy. And if you have any kind of phone, use it or a battery. So this literally happens in batteries. How do we get electricity or current from moving electrons? Electrical current is measured in something called amps or amperes. So what it does is imagine you're sitting there and, and counting how many electrons move past that point in a certain amount of time. That's amps. So higher amps, there's more electrons flowing past. Lower amps, there's less electrons flowing past. <clears throat> voltage is a little different. Voltage is electric potential or electric pressure. So it's kind of think about it like a force pushing or driving the electrons. You should be familiar with voltage. Most of the batteries that we use, if you notice, have the same voltage. So 1.5 volts, 1.5 volts. These all from the AAA to the D batteries, they're all 1.5 volts but we have this battery, which is nine volts, okay? And which you notice is a multiple of 1.5, okay? And then we have other batteries that can have other variations. So what that means is those batteries were connected, okay, in a series. So like this, when you have uh, batteries connected in a series versus connected in parallel. So when we connect them in series, okay, um, the voltage increases, okay? So why would we wanna do this? Well, we can use thinner wires because the amps don't change, just the voltage, okay? Um, however, there's also parallel where we would still have a low voltage, but the amps would increase. Why would we wanna do that? Well, if one of the batteries in that parallel circuit dies, all the other ones still work, okay? You don't have to worry about that so much. I just kind of find a little bit interesting. Let's talk about what you do need to know. Let's talk about electrochemical cells. There are two types of electrochemical cells. Electrolytic and galvanic, also called voltaic. That should make you think of a battery. All electrochemical cells involve redox reactions. Every single one. Since redox reactions are involved, all electrochemical cells have a flow of electrons. Because remember, oxidation was losing electrons, reduction was gaining electrons. So if electrochemical cells, I definitely said I like to that wrong, but if electrochemical cells have redox reactions, they absolutely 100% have a flow of electrons. So electrochemical cell, what is it? Well, it's two electrodes separated by an electrolyte. Let's review some of that vocabulary. Okay, so remember this. Metals are conductors. Uh, that's what you use to make the electrodes. And then we have electrolytes, and they're also conductors. That's acids, bases, and salts dissolved in water. And they also conduct electricity. So that means electricity can flow within the electrode, the piece of metal, but electricity can also flow within this electrolyte solution, okay? So I kind of said it, what is an electrode? Well, an electrode is a conductor and it's a metal. And it connects with the non-metallic part of the circuit. What's that? That's the electrolyte. Okay, that's whatever salt or acid or base has been dissolved in water. There are two different electrodes. We have cathode and we have anode. At the cathode, we have reduction. At the anode, we have oxidation. How do you remember that? Red cat and ox. Red cat, reduction, cathode. And ox, anode, oxidation. So the anode is oxidation, right? It's a metal. It has the oxidation half reaction going on there, which means it loses electrons. As it loses electrons, the anode gets smaller. 
and then we have the cathode. And the cathode is also an electrode, a metal, but it has the reduction half reaction. It gains electrons. So as the reaction occurs, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So think about that. If we're talking about batteries, right? The anode's getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and the cathode's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, but batteries die. So can you think about why batteries would die? Yeah, literally they run out of anode. Okay, now what happens in a rechargeable battery? I'm gonna force that reaction to go backward, and then I make that piece of anode get bigger, and then I can use it again. Some electrochemical cells have a salt bridge. A salt bridge is something that allows ions to flow back and forth. It keeps the electrochemical cell electrically neutral, okay, so that it doesn't get polarized. If Otherwise, like if you touched a battery, you'd get a shock all the time. That would sort of be annoying, okay? Also, if it was a higher voltage battery, uh, that could be a little bit problematic. So ions move through the salt bridge. So where do electrons move? They move through the wire, okay? So an electrochemical cell, we have two electrodes. We have the electrolyte. We may have a salt bridge, we may not, but we definitely have a wire for the electrons to go through, okay? If we don't have a salt bridge, that means there has to be another way for the ions to move. Like in this diagram, there's like a porous disc that allows the ions to move or they might simply just be in the same liquid, okay, without a divider. And that would obviously allow ions to flow. And hopefully this video answers the question, what is electrochemistry? So I hope you learned something new today.